Hi, this is Todd Goodwin. I'd like to talk about a problem that plagues tens of millions of Americans every year, and it's something that is a major cause of uh, illness, stress, loss of productivity, and all sorts of challenges in relationships, and it's called insomnia. Now, I'm not going to define it because there's clinical definitions and people may disagree on what it is, but ultimately we're talking about the difficulty in sleeping and getting a good night's sleep. And I'm not talking about people who deliberately stay up late or wake up early and as a result are tired. I'm talking about someone who wants to go to bed at a certain time and either has trouble falling asleep or wakes up several times during the night and is unable to get back to sleep and as a result they're exhausted in the morning or just their energy level is affected. Uh, this is something that's affected me in the past. It's something that is normal that we experience from time to time, but when it becomes an ongoing chronic issue, that's where it can be really bad in a whole host of areas in our life. Now there's uh, two things I want to make very clear here. First is that there are physiological causes for sleep issues that I'm not going to address here. Those may include eating too much, digestive issues, chemical uh, influences like blood sugar or uh, drinking alcohol. Those sort of things can cause uh, difficulty staying asleep. In some cases, too much caffeine, of course, can prevent you from falling asleep. But really, we're talking about the mental or emotional part. Second, the two main types, as I mentioned, is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. And I really want to focus on the most common cause or the most common form, which is difficulty falling asleep. And the most common cause of that, which is called a difficulty with sleep onset at the beginning of the night or whenever you put your head down and turn your lights off to go to sleep, that wakefulness when it should be sleepiness is what I'm addressing. That difficulty with sleep onset is often caused by an overactive mind that won't turn off. That's the most common cause of sleep issues. So, as I've mentioned before in these videos, you need to look at the cause and not just the symptom. If you have trouble falling asleep, that may be a problem in your life, but that's a symptom. What is causing that could be stress or some emotional turmoil or it could simply be a mind that will not stop chattering. Those are what cause the sleeplessness. That's what causes the insomnia. And so then the question is, how do we quiet the mind? Uh, I've had a client recently who, uh, she's 25 years old, five years ago she had an abortion, and from that point on, initially due to the initial emotional upset of that experience, she had trouble falling asleep. And when she came to see me uh, several months ago, she told me that if she didn't take a, uh, a Benadryl or Unisom or something like that to as a sedative at bedtime, she would often be awake for three or four hours staring at the ceiling, looking at the clock, her mind would be going, and she said she wasn't really aware that it was related to that trauma, at least not consciously, but she had developed a habit of being awake. And we break that down even more, even when, oh, and so what I was going to say is I worked with her to, uh, to quiet her mind, actually in one session, I was amazed that it worked this quickly, uh, usually it takes two or three or four, uh, one session her mind was quiet and she was able to fall asleep without taking any pills in 15 minutes, uh, which is remarkable. And from that point on, the sleep issue was resolved and she was able to fall asleep within you know, 10 to 20 minutes on average every night, which is great. Now here's the thing. An overactive mind can be one part. That's usually caused by unresolved issues in your life. Could be a major issue like something that happened to you long ago. It could be some huge fear about the future, uncertainties, or it could be just a, a to-do list about what you have to do tomorrow or reviewing what happened during the last day. In all these cases, using willpower to quiet your mind is not enough. Distracting you uh, with something could work 
but it doesn't really stop the underlying thoughts from flowing up. It would be like trying to put a cap on a volcano. If you had something heavy enough, it might work a little bit, but eventually the pressure is going to build up and it's going to blow the cap off. So what we need to do is we need to resolve the either the internal conflict between the conscious and the subconscious, that, that chatter that you notice going back and forth, quiet that down so that there's inner peace and the mind is silent. Once that happens, you fall asleep fairly easily. But for some people, there's an added additional challenge when it comes to falling asleep. And that is if the problem has been there for a period of time, months, certainly years, what's happened is you may have expected to have trouble falling asleep. And a lot of clients I've worked with, even after we resolved the mental conflict and the overactive mind, even after they were doing everything that should have allowed for them to fall asleep, they still found it difficult. Why? Because they had developed a habit of being stressed at bedtime. If you anticipate there's going to be a difficult situation, then your mind and body prepare for, for that ordeal by injecting some stress hormones into your system. And so what they've typically found is that when they get ready for bed, at a subconscious level, there's the recognition that here we go again. I wonder how long I'm going to be awake tonight. It's going to be another difficult night. And just that belief, the expectation, is enough to create insomnia. So this is one of those few issues that I've seen where even after you resolve everything that really could be causing it, the belief that they have a problem is enough to keep it going. And so that's where belief is so important, changing that belief to realize you were born naturally able to fall asleep and sleep as much as you needed, and that sleep issues or insomnia, especially when they're mental, are learned. Anything that you learned can be unlearned. So think about that. Don't think about it at bedtime, but consider if you're having trouble falling asleep or if you wake up at 2 or 3 or 4 in the morning and you have trouble falling back asleep, usually it's because your mind is overactive. Ask yourself, what is it that you're not dealing with during the day that your mind is presenting you at night and seek the proper help to resolve it. What I found is that hypnosis and the related tools that I use as a hypnotist are really, really effective once we've identified what's actually causing it. And usually, in most cases, in a few sessions, a handful of sessions, the underlying issues are gone, the stress level comes down, and the belief that sleep is an enjoyable time is restored, and then the problem never comes back. That's typically what happens. So uh, think about how you can overcome your challenges and make sure you sleep well at night, okay? Take care.